Welcome to Family Health Today, Arkansas's only weekly in-depth look at the medical and health issues that affect you and your family. Brought to you by Jones Television. In cooperation with our sponsors, Northwest Arkansas Heart and Vascular Center and the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Welcome back. This week, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration announced it will not approve a type 2 diabetes drug, alagliptin, without more study on its cardiovascular effects. The FDA instituted tougher guidelines and safety standards for diabetes drugs in December 2008. And in March, Japanese drug maker Takeda Pharmaceutical Company said those standards would apply to its application for alagliptin. Dr. John Baldridge, an endocrinologist and diabetes specialist at the Smeeting Center, joins us as we talk about diabetes in further detail. Welcome to the show. Thank you. What do you think about all these new drugs that are suddenly appearing on the market? Well, Jeanette, they're really interesting. Um, I find them fascinating, but uh, I think we should all be cautious about what comes out. I know the FDA does a great job in screening medications, and I'm confident that it will be safe if it's approved. Can you define for us diabetes? Can I define diabetes? In your own words. Oh, how about in, it might take several minutes. <laughs> we'll make it short. short diabetes, sweet is, <laughs> diabetes is really quite a energy uh, problem, an energy for the body to consume properly. Okay. And it's not, um, it's not difficult if you're normal, if you're diabetic, it's very uh, difficult because you need the right amount of insulin. There are other hormones involved. And there are other fuels besides glucose to be burned for energy our body needs. Can you tell us how does glucose metabolism and carbohydrate metabolism differ in a person who is a diabetic versus one that is not? Great question. I think um, the fact that carbohydrates are the hardest of the types of food to burn. But remember, all foods go to glucose. So some foods actually break down to glucose fast in carbohydrates, particularly the white carbohydrates tend to do that more than the darker ones or the ones that have more fiber or let's say they're more complex. So it takes a while for them to break down in our bodies. Uh, fat and protein take, uh, take a, a period of time as well. So having said all of that, if it's, if it's absorbed slowly enough from the stomach, our, our bodies tend to get the right amount of fuel at the right time for the right amount of insulin. In diabetes, a lot of that trafficking is all uh, uh, delayed or s s altered in a way that we don't think is healthy. I see. Now, you said complex carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Give us some examples of what well, you mean by that. Probably, I like to think of the colored uh, carbohydrates such as red, green, yellow. Those are typically plants. Mm -hmm. They can be fruits, but I'm thinking plants. They have fiber. They have uh, a very complex structure that just means that they get broken down much more slowly in the stomach and absorbed, therefore, more slowly from the upper gut. In diabetes, again, the, the speed of having things broken down, the speed of delivery uh, of glucose uh, or things leading to glucose are simply altered. And diabetes uh, is a very complex disorder now. We know more about other hormones that aren't normal in diabetes. How does one maintain and manage blood sugars, whether it's high, whether it's low, or if it's running you know, within the normal limits for the diabetic person? How do they maintain that? Well, again, a good question. I think the balance of nutrition and exercise is paramount. You have to have the right uh, type of food and the right uh, kind of eating pattern. And most of our uh, diabetes in the world today is either related to obesity or at least related to the foods and the foods that we eat and naturally to less exercise. That's, that's paramount too. I understand that if one does not control their blood sugar, they're running high for long periods of time, one of the long-term complications can be a neuropathy, also known as diabetic neuropathy. Is that correct? I think it is. Um, it's not clear whether diabetic neuropathy is due to simply a degenerative process or is it a metabolic process? We think it's more than just high blood sugar. It probably has something to do with circulation too. And uh, many diabetics uh, can escape neuropathy uh, if they have good control of their diabetes. So glucose control 
has something to do with it. Where does one go for accurate and up-to-date information on diabetes, diabetes management, how to stay fit, what foods to eat? I mean, obviously you can go to the internet or yes. to your doctor's office. What, what are your best recommendations? For well, I think, um, I think any of our good clinics and hospitals around would be happy to furnish uh, the person who asks. Uh, I think, frankly, the American Diabetes Association is one of the best sources. It's not political. It's, uh, it comes in different languages. They have many different languages for uh, explanations of either diet or exercise. Um, new things that come along in diabetes, you can, you can learn all about that through the American Diabetes Association. What are some of the worst complications that you see in your office, Dr. Baldridge, when you have a diabetic patient that comes in hasn't had good control of their blood sugars? What are some of the early signs and symptoms that this is getting out of control and you need to take some serious measures before anything you know, fatal happens? Well, as you might indicate, cardiovascular disease uh -huh. is our biggest problem. And most, uh, most diabetics have had their condition for at least five years before it's diagnosed. That mean, means it's that hard to recognize in, in very early stages. The earliest uh, that you can manage diabetes, the best your, are your chances to avoid problems with, say, neuropathy, which typically involves the feet, but it also involves other parts of the body. How can you treat a diabetic who has neuropathy? Are there any, for example, specific measures they need to take to ensure they don't get an ulcer on the bottom of the foot, Good. any special shoes they need to wear or anything like that? Well, I think, uh, again, sometimes our other uh, medical professionals do mm -hmm. um, the best job in helping patients, the podiatrist, uh, most nurse educators, uh, even pharmacists get into the uh, picture. And I would say that um, good foot care, it, patients need to learn from an educational source like uh, any of the programs at any of our major hospitals here have excellent diabetes teaching. Okay. I see. Do you see type 1 and type 2 diabetes patients in your office? Well, certainly, uh, but most physicians uh, like myself see, oh, 9 to 10 times more type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. than we do type 1. Type 1 is a different uh, disease process, uh, we believe, and type 2 is one of those more, uh, more easily acquired over time, particularly if we don't exercise or or do the right nutrition. At what point would a family care doctor, a primary care physician, need to refer their diabetic patients to a specialist such as yourself? Well, I think that uh, sometimes has to be uh, coordinated mm -hmm. and sometimes just conversation uh, with the patient helps the family doctor know that this is a good time because that patient wants to go now, not later. But generally, if you have uh, good success with your treatments, uh, recognizing you're going to have to increase your treatments as you go through life with diabetes. It's like high blood pressure and other conditions that have to be co-managed along with glucose. So uh, if, if it becomes such a problem that uh, it doesn't look like you're getting um, success that you need or want, that's the time to raise your hand. I agree. What do you envision in the future for diabetes, Dr. Baldridge? Well, I think many more good things than we've got now. It's not just uh, an insulin lack, and now we've learned ways to preserve um, the beta cell, uh, which makes insulin, for a longer period of time. And there are there is that promise that uh, some of our current medications, the newest uh, of the new, will actually stabilize the pancreas and help it live a full life instead of uh, quitting somewhere in the middle. Very good. Tell us the website where one can go for more uh, information on diabetes. Well, again, I think I would go first to the uh, www.ada. Um, I'm thinking that it's uh, the .org. It is. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate your time and your expertise. Well, thank you for having me.